欢迎收睇《艺方星期天》，我系 Billy 李志芬。旧年八月，现居香港嘅色士风手 Scott Murphy 喺香港睇咗传奇爵士乐钢琴家 Fred Hirsch 嘅演奏会之后咧，忽然灵感涌现，启发佢灌录唱片。后来更推出咗佢嘅首张个人专辑《A Dream of Form》。咁阵间第二节咧，我哋邀请到 Scott 嚟到我哋嘅节目现场，同我哋介绍下。專業雜技表演啊，喺四千幾年嚟嘅演變同發展，都同藝術咧息息相關。咁講起雜技，我哋通常咧就會諗到競賽運動、馬戲團，甚至係粵劇同埋武術。有一個法國嘅劇團咧，喺將近二十年嚟積極專注將雜技藝術跳出傳統嘅框框同場地，並帶到公共空間。今年法国五月艺术节嘅重点之一系 X Y 剧团，呢、这、一个嚟自法国嘅剧团喺过去十八年以嚟，主要喺公共空间透过表演同杂技同观众联系。劇團喺香港演出《Mobius in May》，摘錄自佢哋二零一九年嘅作品《Mobius》。剧目一共有十九位杂技表演者参演，反思人类喺世界入面嘅角色。We were thinking a lot about animalistic movements and especially birds and how birds move together. We wanted to see how we could combine our circus skills with more contemporary movements, and so we had a big inspiration by what they call murmurations, or big flocks of birds moving in the sky. And we actually spent quite some time running around in a field together, trying to acknowledge how how you can stay in position and how you can move. This thing about being collective, being a unity, but still retain your individuality in movement was was quite an interesting challenge that we tried to reproduce on stage. This performance, the band and the piano player Rashid Urhamdong have joined. I think if there has been a change, it must be that X Y tried for maybe the first time to think how can we incorporate feelings, and we wanted to mix our circus arts with contemporary dance. So we went out and contacted a contemporary dance choreographer who had never worked with circus before. And we invited him to come and work with our company to to co-produce our show. As a director, we have started from the beginning to say, okay, what do we want to create a scene about? What is the baseline? What is the feeling? And then we have some tricks. What tricks fit into this energy, into this moment? And so it's not about the tricks; it's about the energy that we create together. At the beginning, was something like uh, like a child, like uh, the first project experience. I, uh, then we, we passed through some, uh, like uh, a child is growing. For me, Mobius is really like a, an adult of this life. And because we already understood acrobatics, we are a group, we, we know how to do this. X Y 剧团喺法国北部嘅里尔创立。開始嘅時候只係得六位團員，依家包括工作人員同表演者在內，劇團有五十名成員。集體創作係佢哋作品好重要嘅元素，托舉動作係劇團對雜技嘅探索重點。The idea was always to have partner acrobatics, lifting as the main discipline. There is no bigger story. Then a willingness to try to bring people together from across the globe to lift each other because we find the group acrobatics to be a beautiful discipline that we both enjoy performing but also enjoy doing training because there's not only the physical technical aspects there's also the the humane aspects of being close having trust relying on each other. Collective acrobatics it it talks a lot of 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 our society or like we are a lot of people living together so we are in a group. Sometimes you have some troubles with someone, but then when you have to be there, we forgot of this. We are there. We 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 lift each other. It's interesting because 
as an acrobat, you to have the opportunity also to say your opinion, your what do you think about the, the, the creation you are doing? Because you are not just there receiving uh, orders. Uh, yeah. So it's super interesting as an acrobat, as an artist, to be part of this. We put some groups of leads, so everybody can say, ah, I think this, ah, I could, I, uh, but finally there is a group deciding a little bit. We vote sometimes, but we try to not to vote because we like it more when you can talk it out and try to come to an agree agreement, a unanimous agreement. However, it is difficult and it takes a lot of time and energy. And I think the collective life is, uh, it is difficult, but it's also beautiful and fantastic. Yeah. XY 劇團探討大眾，特別係個體與群體之間喺特定社會環境下嘅關係。劇團喺露天場地演出，好多時受天氣影響。五月十二同十三號原定喺大館檢閱廣場舉行嘅演出，就因為天雨而取消。We used to work in uh, indoor places or theaters, so we have always we have the same structure of lighting, for example. So you have some focus points, and then you know, okay, I'm here. The first thing when you perform out, outside, it's uh, really like you, you see the sky, and you know, like you don't know where you are. It's quite rare that we perform outside in general, but what really makes a difference in the outside perspective is that you get closer to the audience, and also I feel. Uh, at least in France, where we have performed a lot, uh, it's a certain kind of audience that goes to the theatre every day. And when you're on the streets like this in an open square, you get to come into contact with a lot of people who normally not uh, would go to the theatre. There's a chance for somebody to experience something that they have never got the chance to see before. We're still just a bunch of people trying to have fun and trying to bring what we do out to the general audience and so that people actually see that we are humans, we sweat, we argue, we have difficulties, but we also have trust and faith in each other. That makes it all worth it. <laughs> Wilfredo Lem was born in Cuba in 1902 to a Cantonese father and an Afro-Spanish mother. He's best known for his distinctive style that combines surrealism and cubism and for the hybrid and magical figures he painted. Lem moved from place to place in his life, but it may seem surprising that, despite his half-Cantonese heritage and elements of Chinese art that appear in some of his work, it has taken so long for a major solo exhibition of Lam's work to be presented in Hong Kong. That exhibition, Wilfredo Lam Homecoming, on show at the Asia Society Hong Kong Centre until 2nd of June, features work in a wide range of media, including paintings, drawings and engravings, as well as a selection of personal memorabilia. Presented by the Wilfredo Lam Estate, the exhibition covers key artistic periods and locations in his life. From his time in Havana and Spain from the 1920s to 1938, in Paris from 1938 to 1940, in Marseille in the early 1940s and on to Cuba, France and Italy in the 1950s and 1960s. Scott Murphy 
，係本地爵士樂壇一個熟悉嘅面孔。舊年八月，佢喺荃灣大會堂欣賞傳奇爵士樂鋼琴家 Fred Hirsch 嘅音樂會。當日嘅表演令到佢好振奮，仲啟發咗佢創作首張個人專輯《A Dream of Form》。今日我哋 Watson 咧邀請到佢嚟到我哋嘅節目現場，同我哋傾偈。Well, Scott, it's great to have you here in the studio. Thank you so much. I'm, it's a real pleasure for me to be here. <laughs> oh, you bet. Uh, it's it's uh, really great that we get to talk about this new album mm -hmm. project that you've put together. To begin with, though, can you just sort of uh, paint the picture broadly of of what the album um, is trying to do, or musically, sort of where it fits into uh, you know the scheme of things? Yeah. So the album itself is something which, for me, it happened almost by accident. Um, a lot of the way that I view this album is that there were some events that came about, I got in touch with people, and then all of a sudden I was in the recording studio making an album. For me, because this is my debut album, it's the first time that I've put anything out that has my own name on it, as opposed to being a part of another group. I wanted to have a project which really spoke about my own experiences and, and how I learned music, like where I came from, what I was doing with music. Um, and one of the best things about this album is that it features a special guest bass player from LA called Yannick Guzdala, who had such a fundamental part of my musical upbringing, my musical growth. How was that? I mean, what was the influence there? It was unbelievable, actually, because um, he had an album which came out in 2008 called Live at the 55 Bar, which was a live album, obviously. That album became almost a seminal part of my university experience. Like my friends and I, we would transcribe the songs, the solos, we'd go out and play it around the UK. So all of that was, all of that music has been inside of me for about 15 years by this point. And then I got the opportunity to have him on my own recording, work with him, make this music with him. It, it, was, uh, it was a really special time actually, yeah. So you've mentioned this recording, made at the now shuttered but iconic uh, jazz venue, uh, the 55 bar, yes. but what, what was it about that particular album that really, really captured you? You know, one of the first things that really jumped out at me listening to that was Elliot Mason, the trombone player, because he's on a, he's on like a, it's a valve trombone, isn't it? It's a bass trumpet. It's a bass trumpet, yeah. okay, so I'd never heard anything like that before. And, and I was listening to this primarily because one of my friends is a bass player, we lived together at the time, and he said, check out this Yannick Guzdala record, and he'd found it online somewhere. And I was enjoying it. I was enjoying all of the instrumentalists on it. Um, Justin Vasquez is the saxophone player, which obviously I was drawn to. Tim Miller was the guitarist with all these crazy things that made his hand look like he was breaking. But Elliot Mason's um, bass trumpet playing, that was a real revelation for me. I'd never heard such um, melodic content from an improvisation trombone player. And to me, that really opened up a lot of how I viewed this kind of groove style of jazz music. Um, so for me, it's like I said, it's been taking away in the back of my mind for years. Really, really taking a lot of um, inspiration from listening to that, which I still do to this day. It's Were there any other inspirations that, that kind of came to you or, or that contributed to this? Yeah, all of this came from a concert I was seeing. Um, I went to see the, the great Fred Hirsch, the piano player, who's, he's one of my top jazz musicians. And I was in this concert, I was watching Fred play solo piano, and it was one of those experiences where 90 minutes just disappeared. And, and I got caught up and excited by the music. I felt so inspired. Um, I floated out of the venue and bumped into CY. And he said, oh, actually for this gig, I've got Yannick Guzdala coming over to play. And because I was caught up in this musicality, this limitlessness of music, from hearing Fred Hirsch play, I thought, oh, can you give me Yannick Guzdala's number? I'm gonna to try to get him to do a recording. And then I just fell down this rabbit hole, and we're here. <laughs> it just it seems like such an incredible then coincidence or, or serendipity, I suppose, yeah. that you had this opportunity to record with this bass player whilst he was in Hong Kong, right? Um, and, then, and then you brought in some other top musicians as well. Mm -hmm. tell, tell me about uh, the contributors to the album then. Yeah, of course. Yannick Guzdala was the first person I booked for this, um, and I know his playing so well. I also knew that we only had four hours to do the recording in, which is a challenge. <laughs> so I had to pick a small band of people that I knew I could trust 
So the first person I called was Daniel Chu, the incredible keyboard player from Hong Kong. Um, he's such a, a visionary in, in terms of um, sound. He always thinks about things starting the, from the starting point of what is the sound I want and how can I best describe this? And it changes any of the music you give him. I also knew that I wanted someone that had exceptional time, um, a real kind of feel for groove and, and playing in the pocket to, to link up with Yannick's bass playing. And the first person I thought of in Hong Kong was Paget Fresh Kid Nanton, who he's one of these guys that he's always playing with a bunch of different types of people. If you get him on a project, he's going to come in and play some excellent groove. So he was precisely the, the final piece of this jigsaw for me. You can play something for us here in the studio. Mm. Um, wh what can we hear and uh, presumably material that's based or from the album? Absolutely. So what I would like to play um, with uh, my fantastic friend, piano player Adriel today, we're going to play the first song on the album. It's called Junta. Um, and I think this is the first song that I, I actually had finished for the recording. I wanted to have a song which had a really kind of incessant almost groove that drove almost machine-like throughout, a pulse that went throughout this whole song, a melody that kind of would come back but slightly change. It would have a different alteration the second time through with space to have improvisation going on as well. So I think if possible, I'd like to play Junta just now. Fantastic. I can't wait to hear it. Mm -hmm. 